Hello everyone, my name is Bethan Maddox and today we're going to be making a giant paper forest and I thought I'd tell you a little bit about my artwork first. So I make large um, paper-based sculptures but I draw with these with some scissors and with a scalpel as well. So I'm going to show you a few images of my artwork and then I'm going to show you how we too can make a giant paper forest together. I make large paper-based installations that often the audience can go around and explore. And when I make the work, I cut the paper with scissors or a knife as if I'm drawing. So I cut freehand without any marks on the paper. And a lot of artists have done this, particularly Henry Matisse. He used to make detailed paper cuts and he said he was drawing with his scissors. So if you want to explore other artists that draw with scissors, he would be a great start. So we're going to have a go at making our own paper forest. We're going to make things like this or like this by drawing with our scissors. Now to do this, you will need some coloured paper. So I've got some really nice kind of autumnal colours. Ideally, you would have a couple of sheets um, of each colour. Or if you don't have any coloured paper, you can also make your own coloured paper. So I've just used some coloured pencils to kind of swirl onto some white paper. You'll also need some scissors. When I use my scissors, I have some really sharp ones, which I find really nice for getting really specific lines when I'm drawing with them. But you also might want to use some round tipped ones. Or if you've got any, you might want to use these, which are called pinking shears. Now, if you see, they have really nice wiggly blades, so you can get really nice wiggly lines, but you don't need them. You might want a pencil, but you don't really need it because we're gonna do all the drawing with our scissors. And then you'll either need a glue stick, or if you've got some, some double-sided sellotape, but you don't really need that. Brilliant. So the first thing you might want to do if you've got just white paper is to get a couple of colours of coloured pencils and then maybe just holding two at the same time you get to do some really fun drawing for this activity. So you would maybe hold two pencils and do some really really good swirling. You might want to get another colour and do some dots and dashes. And this is just called mark making. So you get to make some really nice marks, some really nice drawing for when you make your tree. If you get your two bits of paper, and then if you put them nice and neat together, and then you're gonna fold them lengthways. So if you bring it in like that, and then just using your finger, give it a really good hard press. And then if you take your paper and make sure you notice where the fold is, so fold is here and I'm going to hold it on this side and then this is just where you start cutting or drawing with your scissors. Now this is going to be the base of where your tree stands from. So you want to try and start with a wide base. So I'm going to come in from the corner and I'm going to think about going cutting upwards. And I want a nice thick trunk on this tree and then I'm going to think about the foliage. Now this is where you get to play. So I keep my scissors straight out in front of me and it's the paper that I'm moving. This is so I can draw or cut really nice, long, wiggly shapes. Or if it's easier, you can use your hand with the scissors to cut those shapes. So now that I've cut this kind of shape out, I might want to add a bit more detail. Now this tree has kind of mangrove roots. So I might think about wanting to do that to my big base that I started cutting. And to do that, I'm just going to again just freehand cutting shapes in. So you'll have two exact copies. And then you'll take your glue or your double-sided tape if you have it and following the fold line along here of one of them, you're going to go and press some glue all along that centre fold and then you're going to get the other one and you're going to try and line it up perfectly. So I put mine like this in half and I bring it down to that fold line and I give it a press and then I press it down like that. So they're lined up perfectly and they're glued really nice and strongly. Now this might be a point where you might want to add some colour. And don't forget to turn it over. 
Now once you've got your tree and the glue has dried, you're going to open it up and you want to sort of fold back where the glue is. So I'm lifting it up and where it feels stuck, I'm going to fold it. And then I'm going to do that on the other side. I'm going to fold it back. And you end up with a sort of shape like this. And it should stand by itself. Now, if drawing with the scissors is feeling a little bit tough, you can use a pencil to give yourself an outline. And I thought for these ones, I may use a smaller piece of paper, that's an A5 sheet, and fold it in half. And I'm gonna think about the things that you get on the forest floor, the kind of foliage like ferns that you might find. And I'm just gonna, again, I'm thinking about making a wide base. And when I cut, I'm not gonna to worry too much about getting that pencil line, I might even sort of wiggle around a little bit as I'm cutting it and that then gives you a bit of freedom to play with drawing with scissors while also giving you a line to guide you. And now you may want to add a bit of detail to your trees by maybe adding some holes for kind of foliage. Now for these because they're quite detailed I used a knife a scalpel to cut with those. If you've never used one before, or if you don't have an adult who's confident to show you how to use them, you can just use some scissors. And to make the holes with the scissors, you basically, you choose where you want your hole, and I might want one there, and then you sort of just fold it in half, and you cut a little semicircle, and you might want to do another one, maybe here. So you fold it in half, and put, and you just cut lots and lots of holes all over to help give it a sense of foliage so that when you open it out, it's covered in all these fantastic kind of leaf shapes. And the last thing that you can do is when you've done all that amazing drawing with scissors, when you've sort of been cutting out the foliage, you've got all these brilliant leftover bits. Now, never one to waste anything. I think they're too good to not use. So I'm just going to cut a bit more out of them. And then I'm going to end up with these shapes. Again, just really enjoying treating the pair of scissors a little bit like a pencil, just seeing where the line takes me. Keeping my fingers out of the way, I'm just going to go along putting bits out and I'm ending up with some really brilliant shapes that I'm just going to glue onto my other one. 